All right, it's mid-October and it's finally fall to albacore season here in North Carolina. So I'm gonna go over literally everything I know about stir fishing for them. Like what my favorite lures are, what equipment I use, and basically just a bunch of tips and tactics I've learned over the past few years of trial and error. So today I'm fishing along the Crystal Coast on the Southern Outer Banks, just south of Cape Lookout right here. Now what makes this place so special is that during the fall, the glass minnows and mullet are pouring out of the large inlets and sounds at the same time the fall to albacore are migrating down here from New England, and they'll intercept all this bait and will congregate in huge numbers around the Cape Outlook area and make it their feeding grounds till mid-December. So the blitzes you're seeing are false albacore chasing glass minnows through the surface and at this point I'm just tired of chasing them down the beach. I know that there are other pods coming through here that aren't surfacing so I'm just going to go ahead and make some random casts. I've noticed that when the albies are breaching and already on bait fish it seems a lot harder to get their attention so making blind casts seems to work great and we'll get the attention of those fish that are actively searching for food. It's just a small one. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Look at the colors on that thing. Oh no! Hey, off he goes. I'm going to go over a little bit about my setup. Right now I'm using a one ounce deadly dick spoon tied on with three and a half feet of 20 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon. Uh, the rod has a seven and a half foot made by star rods. And on that I have a 5,000 series Shimano Nasky. Uh, that's spooled with 15 pound power pro slick eight. For the entire setup, I think I paid a little over $200, which is an incredible price for the quality of this rig. And a great place to grab gear locally is at Chase and Tails in Atlantic Beach. They also have the absolute best selection of epoxy jigs and have a great staff that will help point you in the right direction. Now I'm casting this lure out as far as I can get it out into the channel and I'm retrieving it just under the surface at a pretty fast speed. And I'll note that even though I'm using a deadly dick spoon today, it's not exactly my favorite lure to use. I have great luck using a two ounce epoxy jig made by Hoagie Lures, my preference being the color pink. But it's a good idea to have a variety on hand uh, since they seem to like different colors and sizes depending on how finicky they are. Uh, my buddy here outfished me and caught this monster on a simple one ounce sting silver. It goes to show no one lure is a sure thing for these fish. It's not stopping. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, there he is.
there he is. That's a nice one. All right, so fast forward to the next day. There's thousands of false albacore moving down the beach. I made almost 100 casts with a dozen different lures. So in this situation, the best thing to do is just keep downsizing both your leader and lure size. And at this point, I'm using 15 pound fluorocarbon and a 38 ounce gold cast master spoon and I finally start hooking up. Now the best way to spot albies is by watching what the birds are doing. Even when they aren't busting on the surface, the birds will follow these schools around waiting for the blitz to happen so they can swoop down and get in on the feeding frenzy. But there's also a downside of this. It can become a problem tangling up with seagulls from time to time, so I guess it wouldn't be a false albacore tutorial without talking a little bit about how to untangle them when this happens. So the best way to deal with seagulls is by putting your sleeve on your hand and covering its head and beak because the first thing it's going to do is just freak out and try to bite you. But they'll come right down once you cover their face. They can cut away all the line. There's really nothing to it and they'll just fly right off. That's what I like to see. you go. Right here I actually catch my personal best and I'm just throwing a rattle trap to catch bluefish for shark bait later. It was a complete surprise and this Albi was a complete donkey. Uh, the GoPro doesn't do this fish justice. Oh no.
Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you found this useful and want to see more weekly videos of me fishing around the Moorhead City and Newburn area, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate any support to my channel, and I will see everyone next time.